All right. So from one uh, way to worship right on into the next way to worship, and that's what tonight's all about. We're here to worship the King, and so uh, just jump in and engage in that. I want to take a second, and I just want to uh, acknowledge uh, last weekend's events here at our church. It was an amazing uh, weekend. I just want to, uh, of course, thank you. I want all of us, please, to thank Pastor Tom for the clear message of family that he gave to our church, and uh, it was, it was, it, this is a place where everybody knows your name, and, and we want to work on that, and we want to be loved and, and love each other big time, and so thank you for that message. I'm excited, and uh, he's excited to be a part of our team and to serve you, and so if you, if you need uh, someone on staff here, a pastor to, to pray with, to talk to, advice, you want to learn, uh, if you came up to him and said, Pastor, I want to I wanna learn God's Word, I want you to help me, that's like totally his thing, and so if you'd like to do that, please uh, just go see him. So I thank you so much for that, and I thank you for the, for the uh, high theology of the Electric Jesus tingle. That was awesome. I'm so excited. Like this past weekend, uh, Mike was up here talking about this, this vertical study and the, and the prayer night and stuff like that, and, and, and those are good times. But I got to tell you something. Like this past weekend, I mean, this past week on prayer, prayer night's an amazing thing because prayer night doesn't have anybody good looking up here. Like there's no awesome musicians. There's no preacher. There's no video. This is like nothing up here. And on, so on Monday night, that's all it is, is, is dim lights and some quiet music like Brian was just playing. And that's it. And, and so there's no entertainment here, man, nothing. And so we just come in and we pray. We just go vertical for one hour. And, and so, but last week when, when I got here, I don't know if you all remember Monday, but it was coming down, right? It was coming down in buckets, and, and I walked out, of, I mean, it was pouring rain, and I got out of the car to, co to walk in here, and as soon as I left my car, over t this side of the building, by those trees right there, a lightning bolt hit right there, and dude, I about jumped out of my skin. I thought they were going to have to clean my Depends, man. I was so scared. It was ridiculous. And, and so I'm thinking, man, this, I, who's been going to church for more than 10 years, right? So you know what happens when it rains. And nobody comes, right? Nobody comes. It's like, oh, it's raining out, it's cold out, it's hot out, it's snowing out. They even use that in Florida, right? And, and, and they don't come. But I'm telling you, man, some, God is doing something here in this church because the, the, it wasn't 10 people, man. That music started and the lights went dim and just bam, bam. The door kept opening and closing. And before you know it, man, the place was filling up with people. It was absolutely awesome. I'm encouraged by that. It was incredible. So I'm just, I'm just excited about what God is doing in this church, and I'm excited about what he's going to do in us here tonight as we study God's Word. So, hey, anyone ever remember, uh, do you guys remember, some of you old folks, remember Joan Rivers? Yeah. Right, can we talk? Can we talk here? So I just want to have a talk with you. I just want to have a talk, okay? Just want to have a talk. That's so not Boston. That's so not Boston. That's so New York, right? Yeah, New York. Yeah, thank God is right. <laughs> Can we have a talk? So let's have a talk about something. Um, anyone grow up in a house where uh, dad and the police and the fire and like the teachers and pastors and stuff like that, they were sir? They had to be sir, anybody? Okay. So, so certain people just kind of commanded that thing. Certain positions commanded it. Certain people just had to be obeyed, right? Or else you got it. Every, they had to be obeyed. So with certain people in certain situations, yes, sir, was the only acceptable answer, correct? Or else you got it from mom or dad. You had to, to do that. But if you're a Christian, right? If you're a Christian, in other words, if you have, uh, if you have embraced this, this, this reality that, that you, during your life, have have. Uh, rebelled against a perfect and holy God in any way, shape, or form, and, and you have broken his rules at all ever, 
right? If you can embrace that reality and realize that you can't fix that, and so someone told you about Jesus and that he could fix it, and so you embrace this idea that Jesus Christ went to the cross, became sin, took on the penalty for your rebellion, and died and then rose again, and that if you embrace that by faith as your sacrifice, then you're saved, then you're a Christian. So if someone ever said, I never heard the gospel, now you have. That's the gospel, okay? That's the gospel. So if you're a Christian, you, you have a sir. You have a Lord, right? You have a yes sir, and his name is Jesus, okay? His name is Jesus. Now, even though he's gone physically, he's here in spirit, and, and the Holy Spirit of Christ has done and is doing and will do a lot of things. And we'll talk about that. I sense a series on the Trinity coming your way. Okay, so we're going to try to explain somehow the unexplainable to you about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and what they do and who they are and how they work together. That's coming but for tonight, I just want to say that this Holy Spirit of Christ, he does, I want to point out two things. One, he inspired Scripture. He's the author. Do you have a Bible in your hand? Who has a Bible in their hand? Everyone should have one in their hand in this church. Raise it up. Let's see it. Let's see it. Well, that's a, yeah, excuse. Good, valid excuse. Although she should have one in her hand. <clears throat> okay, awesome. That book was written, listen, unashamed written by God. Do you understand? The scripture says of itself that all scripture, every bit from Genesis to Revelation, was inspired by God and is useful for teaching and correction. It's inspired by God. And it also says, I believe it's in 1 Peter, it says that no prophet, no one who ever spoke for God, right here, ever did it on their own will. But they were inspired and moved by God's spirit to write this stuff. This is what the Holy Spirit does. And he also, second thing, just, just two things tonight. Holy Spirit does a lot of things. He convicts us of sin. He, he, he draws us close to Jesus, and he, let, and he lets Jesus be known, right? Um, but the second thing is that he lives in the believer. He lives in the believer. Okay, so, so here's the truth of, about your salvation. I'm just going to read this to you. You don't have to go there if you don't want to, but I'm going to read it. Because I love the Bible and I love to share with you. So Romans chapter 8, I want to read this to you. Verses 10 and 11, it says this. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life. you got to hear, hear this again. The Spirit of Christ gives you life. You're living by His Spirit. You, yourself, have died and now you're a new man or woman living by the Spirit. Because you have been made right with God, the Spirit of God, this is, this is going to be an awesome place to yell. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. The Spirit, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. That's awesome truth. The creator of heaven and earth lives inside of you. Hallelujah. Right? That's awesome. That's awesome. So, since you're living by the Spirit, that's the only reason why you're going right now. It's because of the Spirit of God in you, right? You were dead in your sin. Now you're alive in Christ because the Spirit lives in, inside of you. So Galatians 5.25 is some truth for you. You need to hear it. Since we are living by the Spirit, why are you alive? Because of the what? Because of the Spirit, okay? Be since you are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our life. See, he's in you, and he's trying to do some things, but you have to let, you have to let him lead you. Just like you have to let him change who you are by changing the way you think, God's decided to give you the power to, to choose whether you're going to let him lead you or let anything else lead you. That's your choice. You get to make that choice. What was that word for dynamite? Dunamas. What is it? Dudamas. Okay. So I ask, the reason I ask is because too often the Dudamas, the dynamite powered believer, is, is letting other things 
lead them. And, and, and that's not good. So the believer that's got this dynamite power inside of them to, to choose God acts and goes and speaks and responds according to circumstances rather than the Spirit. And so the title for tonight is this. Look at, it, look at the screen. There ain't no, okay, let's look at it. There's no sir in circumstances. You guys following me? I thought I'd get a better response out of that one. There's no sir with an S in circumstances. Amen. You don't have to listen to the stuff you see or the stuff that's around you and follow it. You need to listen and follow your sir. And who's that? Yes, Jesus Christ is your sir. So some things are sir and they need to be followed and obeyed. But too often we see a situation we see something, we hear something, we're told something, we have expectations levied upon us, and we act upon those things. Uh, but our eyes deceive us, and, and our feelings are liars, and, and the world is corrupt, and so we, we shouldn't be following the things that we see. Certain things in life don't deserve to be followed, and you don't have to obey your circumstances. Let me give you an example, I, and some of you may, may know this story if you've been in this church for a while, but most of the people in this room have not been in this church for a while, so let me give you something fresh. This was years ago. I'm going to give you an example of what, what I'm talking about here. This is an example of my own life of, of not following the right way, taking circumstances and making a choice based on it. So it was years and years ago. I'd say it was probably like 1993, 1994. There was this horrible storm that was coming to this area. And, and everyone knew about it. And it was on the news. And you know what the news does. They make it worse than it really is to try to scare you to death. You know what I mean? So, so we're all scared to death. And in the house that I was renting in Mount Dora, there were these huge old oak trees. That's the whole town over there, right? So there's, we had four huge oak trees on the property. And so I, I'm looking outside, and it's, the wind's whipping back and forth and everything. And I'm, I look out, and, and, and I used to have this Dodge Aries K. Anyone ever seen one of them things? It's the only car on the planet that's uglier than my Volvo. And I had it. I just, that's just who I am. I don't know what it is. But, but I had this, 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 this bluish-gray Dodge Aries K, and it was parked right in the, on the dirt driveway there. And, and I, that's all I could see outside was these huge trees, right? And they're waving back and forth, right? And the little branches are falling off because now it's like it's really ramped up outside. And so I'm sitting there, and I see this circumstance. I see what's going on in front of me. So I make a choice to go out. I think it would be wise to go out because I don't want my car to get damaged, to go out and get in the car and pull it underneath my carport. That makes sense, right? Does it? Why are you guys laughing at me? Because you know what's coming, right? I parked right in there, and like seven minutes later, I just, all I hear is, <laughs> and this mass, not the big trunk, but the secondary one, huge, bam, right on the carport and crushed the roof of my car. <laughs> totally destroy the car. But listen, I'm just saying, I wasn't a Christian back then. I'm not saying that, that I should have, you know, been praying and saying, Spirit, what do I do? Because I didn't even know there was any such thing. But I'm just saying, sometimes we, we see something and we just respond to what we see or hear, and it's not, listen, but, but if you're a Christian, you shouldn't just do that. You should, you have someone that wants to lead you, that you should follow, that you should ask before you do stuff, right? So, so it, I didn't do that, though, and so my car was destroyed. But my circumstances dictated my choice, and my actions. So I want to look at, that's, that's just a story about me. That doesn't matter. So you just forget that, please. And let's talk about biblical example because that's most important. What happened to me doesn't mean anything. So I would ask you to please just turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 4. We're going to look in Acts chapter 4. We're going to look in Acts chapter 5 tonight. I think we're going to go back to Luke next week, but again, here we are talking about leading the Spirit by the Spirit, right? So I'm just going to see what he wants. That's what I think, but so much for plans, right? So, so let's just turn in our Bibles to Acts chapter 4, 
and I'll kind of lead you through there. But let, you know, you can't just open up the Bible and rip it open and, and, and start reading, right? So you need to have some context so you understand what's really going on. So the context of Acts chapter 4 and 5 is this. Jesus Christ, I just shared the gospel with you, right? Jesus Christ has now gone to the cross to, to die, to pay for your sin and mine, the sin of all mankind if they were, are willing to receive it. So he's gone to the cross, he actually dies, and he's buried in the tomb. Okay, now here, this is going to be a great place right here for you to scream, right? He dies on the cross, he goes to the tomb, but then he raises to new life and walks out of the tomb, yeah. right? Awesome. He walks out of the tomb, right? So after he does that, he gets with his believers, and he's like, listen, and he gives them the great commission. He's like, all right, listen, listen, I told you what I was going to do. I told you I was going to fall victim to the, to the authorities. They're going to whip me, beat me, and kill me, and I'm going to rise again. And they're like, yeah, sure. You're and, and then he does it, right? And just to be awesome, he walked through some walls to make a point. So this risen Jesus walks through the walls, and he comes to his people and says, all right, now listen. I want you to go make disciples of every single person on earth. Go baptize them and teach them everything that I've taught you. That's the context of Acts chapter 4. And by the way, he says, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. See, we're not to be led by circumstances. We're to be led by our sir, right? Yes, sir. And Jesus, who is our sir, says, I'm going to be right here with you and so that you can say yes to me. I'll be right here. I'll be speaking. I'm not going to be hollering, but I'm going to be talking to you. I'm going to be leading you. I'm going to be trying to influence what you do. I'm talking to you. You, you have to choose. He says, uh, my sheep, they know my voice. And they follow me. And they follow me, right? So the early church is not someone, th th these, this group of people is not someone to look at and go, wow, those guys are awesome. No, they're really not that awesome. Actually, what they're doing is just following orders. Jesus said, go tell everyone about me. So what do they do? They just start telling everybody about him. They tell their friends, their neighbors, their colleagues. They go to the temple. They go to work. They go in the square. They tell everybody about Jesus. That's just what they do. That's what we're supposed to do. Somebody say amen. amen. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens in, in Acts. Let's talk about some circumstances. So in Acts chapter 4, you see in verse 3, following the orders of their sir, yes, sir, and they go start telling everybody about Jesus. And in Acts chapter th uh, 4, verse 3, it says that the apostles were arrested for doing what they're told. Jesus said, go preach me. They preach him. They get arrested. And then what? Verse 18 Let's see, verse 18. So they called the apostles back in, and they commanded them, so they arrested them, talked to them, sent them off, try to figure out, what in the world are we going to do with these guys? They won't shut their mouth. So they called them in and said, listen, never again speak or teach in the name of Jesus. Quit this Jesus thing. Okay? So Acts chapter 5, let's just go on. It says all, in verse uh, 12, it says, all the believers met regularly in the temple. Right? And it says that tons of people were getting saved. So what's happening now? They told them, don't talk, but they meet in the temple. And they're not all just sitting there quiet. They're, they're teaching them something because it said the people believed and got saved. And they were getting healed. So tons of people are, get, are gathering. They're being preached to about Jesus. They're being healed by Jesus. And so what happens in verse 18? The apostles arrest, are arrested again for preaching and healing in Jesus' name. Well, just for good measure, look in verse 26, and guess what happens again? They get arrested again for doing the same thing. They're, they keep preaching Jesus. These people cannot be shut up. And so they're preaching Jesus, and they get arrested again. Why? For teaching in Jesus' name. That's just what they do. So 540 gets a little bit worse. Not only did they get arrested but it says that the apostles were flogged. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. And, the, and then ordered them once again, never again to speak in the name of Jesus. So we've got some circumstances here, right? And try to, and listen, it, it's no good if I just preach about historical information. You got to put yourself in the sermon, right? Put yourself in the sermon. So when I say they have some situational 
circumstances, you got to think about your life. You have some circumstances in your life that you're in a situation that is trying to dictate your thoughts and actions, right? You all have them every single day. So what happened here? Their situation is this. They've been arrested three times. They've been arrested three times for preaching Jesus. So that's a, that's a bad situation, right? And I've said this before, the jail now and the jail then, two totally different things. You know, they have government rules now for our jail so that the people are treated nicely and humanely. Like, it might not be good there. I don't ever want to go. I'm grateful that I never have. But I'd much rather be in Tavares than where these guys were. You know what I'm saying? At least over at Tavares, they feed you. It might be horrible, but it's food, right? At least you're not laying in feces with rats and stuff all over you. I mean, that, that's what's going on. There's air, you know, I've heard, I visited lots of people in there, but I, I never really like to stay. I just don't like being in there, honestly. I don't like jail visitation, to be honest with you. So please don't get arrested. I really don't like visiting y'all. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't like it at all. It gives me the creeps. But all the prisoners in there, they all say that it's so stinking cold in there. So cold. Man, I bet you Paul and John, and all they would have loved some air conditioning. They would have been loving that air conditioning, right? Sitting in a, in a cave, in a puddle of your own urine and poop and stalks and bugs and rats and it's in the desert. Man, just awful, right? They would have loved. Man, it's just too chilly in here. It's like one of them union jobs. Look whose head's down over there. <laughs> Love you. <clears throat> How about authoritative circumstances? How about three times the, the leaders look at them and said, listen, I've arrested you and I'm telling you right now, do not preach Jesus anymore or else, right? So they got some authority speaking to them. And then how about some physical circumstances? A lot of us have physical circumstances, right? Some, um, maybe some pain. Some of us have some pains. And so when we have intense pain in our life, we act accordingly. And so sometimes we act stupidly by, listen, self-medicating, doing what you think is good to do to make the pain go away and end up like, that's a bad choice, okay? I'm just saying that's a bad choice. But we make, we make decisions sometimes based on physical ailments and pains, don't we? And so what about these guys? Look in verse 40 of chapter 6. It says that they were, that they were listen, they were flogged. They were flogged. Can you bring up the picture? You guys see that up there? That's a Roman flogging whip. Now, I'm not talking about just like a horse whip. I'm talking about a whip that has metal balls on it with spikes, or sometimes they would use chunks of bone. So when they whipped you, it hurt when you got hit, and then it ripped your flesh off when they took it off of you. That's what they would do. And, and that's what's happening to these guys. They're ordered to be flogged. But if you look, this is, this is awesome right here, ready? This is, if you got nothing else, this is it right here. They got flogged, but that evening as they were released, they rejoiced. They rejoiced because they were found worthy to be flogged for the name of Jesus. Man, that is amazing, right? They left rejoicing. Oh, the power of your choice. You could choose to re be rejoicing in pain. You can choose to be rejoicing in any circumstance if you want. I don't know what you went through today, but I don't think anyone in here got flogged with that. But some of us, including me, had a crap attitude, some, some of us today right? Come on. Yeah, why? You, you and I could have chose a lot better. 
They were, they were flogged. That means they were beaten and their flesh was ripped off and they rejoiced in Jesus Christ. The power of the choice that God has given us. Awesome, awesome power. Awesome power. I read a book, Keep Your Love On by Danny Silk. I want to say it. It is. And it talks about being a powerful person. And I don't want anyone to get filled up in ego there. What it really means is that you have a choice on how you're going to think and how you're going to act and what you're going to say. And that you should never allow anyone or anything to make that choice for you. Be a powerful person and choose to rejoice. You can. If they can, the same spirit that lives in, 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 that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, lives in them. They made the choice, and so can you. You can choose to have a good attitude. You can choose to not be angry. You can choose to forgive. You can choose to put the stinking cigarette down and never smoke another one again. You can choose to put the drink down. You can choose to put the drug down. Nothing can tell you otherwise. You choose and you do, and that's it. It's your choice. It's your choice. And I'm not yelling at you because I didn't experience it on my own. I drank like a fish and I smoked like a smokestack forever. And one day I said no more and I've never one time, and I'm nothing, one time since then, it's been 15 years, have I had a drink to my lips or, or a cigarette to my lips. It's so bad. Listen, I'm so convinced of this that I won't even take NyQuil. Because I made a commitment, I'm never drinking alcohol again. So I won't even take NyQuil. And listen, I'm nothing. Nothing. The spirit that lives in me is the same spirit that lives in you. Right? And in you. Everyone here, who, if you're a Christian, you're the same spirit in you. It doesn't make any difference, right? Come on. You can all say no to it. You can all say no. We all have the same spirit living inside of us that gives us the power to rise from the dead. So rise from the dead, whatever this circumstance is that's kind of leading you, just kick it to the curb and say, go to hell and be done with it. That's all you got to do. It, I'm telling you, for all those people that think it's more difficult than that, it's not. Make a choice. You chose to put deodorant on, I hope. <laughs> you chose to brush your teeth this morning, didn't you? You chose to eat. You chose, praise God, to put clothing on. If you have the power to choose that shirt, then why don't you have, I'm not, I'm not picking on you, I'm just saying, why don't you have the same power to choose not to smoke a cigarette? Well, if you could put on those shoes, why do you not have the same power to put the drink down and never pick it up again? You have the power to choose, you just need to make the choice. That's it. It's that simple. Honest to goodness. So many things, so much hurt and pain and and. and disaster in people's lives could be changed and fixed if you'd make a choice to do the right thing and just do it. And don't say it's hard. Don't speak that death over yourself. It's not hard. It's easy. I'm a winner. I'm, chi I'm the child of Jesus Christ. I have the same spirit living in me that raised him from the dead. And so I'm victorious over this sin. No more will I do this. You keep that. That's not an inspirational speech. That's the truth. Am I saying anything that's not true? Are you a son of God? Does the spirit live in you? Does that spirit live in Christ and raise him from the dead? Did that spirit speak and the worlds were created? So he can make you quit smoking. Right? It's no big deal. It's no big deal. Okay. So let's look at our circumstances here in the Bible. Let's look, in, let's look deeper into this situation here in, in Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 5. First circumstance that's trying to rule you see in Acts chapter 4, look at verse 13, right? This is awesome. Verse 13, right? They're preaching Jesus, preaching Jesus, preaching Jesus. 5,000 people now are saved. Like the church just started. They just launched this thing, and this 5,000 people have come to know the Lord, not including women and children. Like who knows? It could have been 10, 15,000 people, right? That's awesome. Something's happening. So they're preaching, 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 and, and so the, 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 the leaders arrest them, and the, the council members here in verse 13, right? Listen, 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 listen. Remember a couple weeks ago when I told you if you feel faith swelling up inside of you, you need to stand up, right? 
get ready to stand up out of your seat. You ready? Here we go. He says, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were, they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures, but they also recognized, this is it, them as men who had been with Jesus. Right? That should inspire faith to be, yes, that's what I'm talking about. That God could use a regular person. That you didn't have to graduate seminary. You don't have to be ordained. No one has to lay hands on you and say, now go preach the gospel, right? He, he just, these are just people that hung out with Jesus. Are you hanging out with Jesus? Yes. You need to hang out with Jesus. You hang out with Jesus, and he can use you for amazing things. Just like he did with these guys. So what happens? They're preaching like crazy. They're just regular, everyday guys. They're preaching, preaching boldly, boldly, unashamed, right? And, and, and in verse 18, what, is, what, are the people, what do the leaders say? They're just regular people. And in verse 18, it says this. So they called the apostles back in, and they commanded them never again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. So verse 19, po- yeah, verse 19, amen, sister. I got electric Jesus tingles. So, so, right. So, 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 Pete, so Peter and John reply with, with this. Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? So, so what, is it, what are they saying here in verse 19? They're saying this. Sir or circumstance, right? That's what, they, that's what they're saying. Sir or circumstance is the question. So how, how'd they do? Look at verse 20. Just go on the text. We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. Listen, they were just following the Great Commission, right? Isn't that what Jesus told them? Go go talk to everyone and teach them everything I taught you. So what are they saying? We're just teaching everything you taught us. That's what we're doing. They're just being obedient to the Great Commission. Okay, here's here's the next one, circumstance number two. Look at um, chapter 5, verse 12. So here are the, it's the early church, the apostles, these leaders in the church. They were performing many miraculous signs and wonders amongst the people. And all the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Colonnade. So, so they're meeting together and all these miracles in Jesus' name, signs, wonders in his name, they're teaching in the temple and what happens? Verse 14, more and more people believed. Amen. And listen to this, and were brought to the Lord. Amen. Right? So, so let me ask you, we're going to talk about this next week, about being brought to the Lord. Are you bringing people to the Lord? You, that's, that's your gig. Right? His only plan for the salvation of the human race is who I'm looking at right now. That's your job. So we're supposed to bring people to the Lord. That's what we're supposed to do, okay? So we're going to hear more about that next week. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Okay, so, so, now, so what's the result of this? They're, they're, they're doing signs and wonders, and they're teaching like boldly in the temple. People are getting saved. They're being brought to the Lord. The place is packing, right, in the temple. So look at verse 18. What, what happens here? Verse 18. Um, they get, oh, I'm sorry, hold on. Yeah, um, they get arrested and put in jail. Verse 18, right? They arrested the apostles and put them in jail. All right, here, and now listen, listen, but, 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 say but. but. But listen, here we go, here we go. You might be jumping up out of your seat again. Look at verse, nine, verse 19, right? They get thrown in jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night and opened the gates of the jail and, br- and bring them out. That's awesome, right? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> And then the Lord, through this angel, says, go to the temple that you just were at, where you were just doing this, where you got arrested, go back to the temple, and give the people this message of life. Amen. Go, go do this, right? Okay, so, 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 so what do we do, right? So is, 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 again, sir, yes sir, or circumstance, right? What do we do? Well, look at verse 21. What, what, what does it say? Um, 521. So at daybreak, the apostles entered the temple, listen, as they were told. That's sir, right? That's sir. 
and immediately began teaching. Amen. Immediately. Amen. I, I want to point something out. This, this, this daybreak thing and this immediately thing, and, and this is important. Like, listen, you got to get this. Like, too many people I find in church in my life are, are kind of, they're waiting around and they're sitting on their, on their holy heinies and they're not really doing anything. And, and like, for instance, they make, they make church attendance on their calendar in ink once their schedule frees up. And they make giving uh, a priority once they start making more money, right? And they start serving when they have some more free time. Right? And they start sharing the gospel when, when they learn some more. But, but see, Jesus said, go make disciples. Right? That's what he said. He didn't say, go to Jerusalem and sit there forever. He said, when I come, I'll let you go. He came and he sent. And so we're sent right now. So he said, go do this. And so you can see, they didn't wait. When, they, when, when God said, go to the temple and go do this, they didn't sit on their holy knees and just sit around and wait and say, well, when I have some more free time, Lord, then I'll go do it. No, immediately, at, like, they got arrested at night. They got released. The next morning, as soon as the temple opened, wham, they were there preaching their, their hearts out boldly. So we can't be waiting all the time. No more, oh, we're just waiting on the Lord. Listen, if you want to talk about waiting on the Lord, please see Pastor Tom. Don't tell me. I don't want to hear it. I don't know if you do either, but I'm just pawning it off. I don't want to hear about waiting on the Lord. I, I don't want to hear waiting on the Lord. Get busy for the Lord. Get busy for the Lord. Right? What happens if you're waiting on the Lord? to do something, he decides tomorrow's the day, ripping open the clouds, and here comes tattoo Jesus coming down. And you were waiting on the Lord. What are you gonna do then? Dang. Right? Don't be waiting on the Lord. Do for the Lord. He's, some things he's already said to go do. How much praying do you need to do about the Great Commission? How much praying do you need to do about telling people about Jesus? How much praying do you need to do about going to baptize someone? Don't bring them to me in here. You got a bathtub at your house? You got a pool at your house? You know what? I, I don't want to baptize people anymore. I want to receive phone calls that you did at your house. Dude, can you imagine that? All these people baptizing the people like crazy all through the Golden Triangle and Leesburg. Woo, man. I'm getting the tingles. That would be amazing, right? That's what he needs. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. We don't have to wait. Listen, at daybreak, right away, wham, immediate Obedience. How many people in here like it when their kids make them wait when you tell them to do something? Oh, you think your daddy in heaven likes it then? Made in his image to be like him. Ticks you off? Well, I'm just saying. Mm-hmm, right? So, so, so what's, the, what's the benefit, right? What's the benefit, you say, for us following the Spirit's lead? What's the benefit of us obeying Jesus? Well, first of all, he said, if you love me, you obey me. But what's the benefit in following Jesus? our sir. Well, let me ask you a question. Look at this here. Look in verse uh, 24. When the captain of the temple guard and the leading priests heard about this whole angel of the Lord coming and open up the jail cell and they get out, now they're back out of the prison into the temple that they just got dragged out of and they're preaching again boldly and people again saved. When the captain of the temple guard and the leading priest heard this, they were perplexed, no duh, wondering where it all would end. How about Leesburg? How about Leesburg? How about how, where it would end? It, it got all the way over here, it's right here in this room. How about that? How about now, instead of 12 dudes, there's 2.1 billion Christians across the earth. The largest religion in all the world. That's where it was going to end. And it's because they were obedient when their sir said move. And they did. And that's what happens when we're obedient to the Lord, to our sir, to our sir. All right, let's look at uh, the third one. Look at verse 26. The captain went with his temple guards and arrested the apostles, but without violence. Did you ever have one of them days? 
Just no matter what you do, you just keep failing, right? It's like no matter what they do, right? They do something they think is right, arrested. They do something they think is right, arrested. Now again, they do something they think is right, arrested. Ever, I mean, this circumstance that I'm talking about here is not external circumstance. I just want to kind of put you in the sermon, right? This is an internal circumstance. This is when you start feeling, and I know you do, that nothing you ever do seems to work out, yeah. right? You're just like, man, I keep trying, and I keep failing, right? So don't you think that maybe they kind of felt that a little bit? Like, I knew they were honoring the Lord, and we do things, we honor the Lord, that's, that's good. But these guys, like, they're doing what they actually heard, like, the voice of the Lord say, go to the temple and do this. So if the Lord, like, audibly speaks to you and tells you, hey, you should do this, well, we all know, well, most of us, some of us might know Romans 8, 28, where all things work out for the good to those who are called, right, and, and called to his purpose and love the Lord. Well, they're doing it, and they're getting arrested, and flogged. Like, it's not going well, right? So sometimes, as Christians, we probably feel like that too. Like, we're trying to do the right thing, but it just never seems to work. So this ever-failing pattern starts to become a massive mountain, and it will, it'll, it'll, it'll influence the way you think and what you say and what you do, right? It, it does, often. And, and that could have happened with these guys too. Um, again, in verse 28, they tell them after they're arrested, don't preach Jesus. So after you've obeyed and failed, and obeyed and failed, and obeyed and failed, and obeyed and failed, and did the right thing and failed, did the right thing and failed, did the right thing and failed, did the right thing and failed. That's kind of what these guys are experiencing right here. And they tell them again, don't preach Jesus. So again, the question here is, Sir, or sir, come stance, right? And, and I got to tell you that it's at this point that the lordship of Jesus Christ is in the balance of these types of choices. Because it says that my sheep hear my voice and follow me. So if you ain't following, you ain't his. And I'm not making anything up. I'm just saying, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. It doesn't say that they ought to. Does it? It doesn't say that they should. It doesn't say that they often do or on occasion or just on Saturday night at six. It says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Christ followers, amen. That, that, that's the bottom line. And a lot of us deceive ourselves and our heart is, de is deceptive because we feel like we're a Christian but feelings are liars often. Our heart is deceiving. We think we're Christians, but we're really not doing what the Bible says to do. We're not, we're not being led by the Spirit of Christ. We're not being led by his word that he inspired on how to correct your life. Okay, you're doing this wrong. Do it like this way, and you don't. You can't say you're following Jesus if you're not. I mean, not profound just or fancy. It's just true, right? It's just true. So, look at verse 29. How did they do? They have this, this mountain in their life of failure. They're, they're doing it, and it's not working out. They keep getting arrested. But again, Peter and the apostles reply, we must obey God rather than any human authority. Any human authority. Okay? Um, here's here's uh, the last circumstance. Um, Look at verse, let's just read 29 through 32. I'm going to read that to you, okay? And then I'm going to have the band come up and join us. We're going to, go, we're going to sing to Jesus. Um, but Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than any human authority. And so then they go through this explanation as to why they have to. It gives credibility and authority to Jesus. He says, the God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on a cross. Then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit who is given by God to those who obey him. Now, 
<clears throat> so they have to obey, right? Because they want to obey sir, not circumstance. But it just gets worse and worse for them. Because if you look, it, it wasn't now, it's beyond arrested. Now it's not just, don't do this. Now it's worse. In verse 33, it says that they decided to kill them. So now they've got that looming over their head. That not only were they going to get arrested, not only could they be flogged and have their flesh ripped open and hurt, but now the leaders have decided, okay, that's it. We're going to kill them. So you can imagine now there's a, an additional layer of circumstance in front of them. Like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? <clears throat> <coughs> well, verse 40. So the others, um, before that, this one guy comes in, Gamaliel, and he convinces them, hey, listen, don't kill this guy. Don't kill these guys. Because other people have, 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 have claimed to be powerful leaders and stuff, religious people, and their, their little movement died. But, but these people, I mean, he, you can tell he sensed that there was something different about them because he told them, he says, listen, if, 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 if these people are really like God's people and you try to stop them, you may be fighting against God himself and you ain't going to win that one, right? So it says here in verse 40 that the other people on the council that had the, the power to decide whether they lived or died, jailed or flogged, they accepted the advice of this man. And so they called in the apostles and had them flogged. Then they ordered them again, never again speak in the name of Jesus, and they let him go. So what happens now? Again, here they are. They have to make a decision. They've been threatened with death. They've been flogged to the bone. They've been arrested three times. And they're now once again ordered, I'm telling you. Basically, they're just telling them, you need to shut your mouth. No more. So now they're faced with a choice again. Sir or sir circumstance. So look at verse 41. The apostles leave the high council rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus. And listen to this. And every day, someone say every day. every day. Every day in the temple and from house to house. What does that mean? Everywhere. They continued to teach and preach this message. Say it with me. Jesus is the Messiah. That's what they did. They had to make a choice. In the face of circumstance, they had to make a choice to follow sir, not circumstances. So I'm, I'm going to invite the band to please come up here. We're going to worship this Jesus. With your worship, let him know that he is the Messiah, that he is your sir. See, we need to make some choices here tonight. We need to make some declarations that we have a sir, church, a sir whose spirit lives in us. A, a spirit that lives in us, whispering and influencing us, but we have to choose to be led. Amen? We, we, have to, we have a sir in us whose spirit authored the scriptures. And the answers on how to think and what to say and how to act are in his word. And we need to choose to open it, to read it, and to do it. We need to choose and declare tonight, once and for all, that we will be led by our sir rather than our circumstance. Whatever we choose to obey, the Bible says, becomes our master. Did you know that? So you have the power to choose. So tonight, I would ask you, if you're a Christ follower, to choose afresh that you are going to, by God's grace and the power inside of you, to choose to follow your sir rather than your circumstance. If you're not a Christ follower, you can make a choice of your will right now to make Jesus your sir and begin to follow him for the rest of your life. You can just say it. Listen. That clap means that if you say yes, you'll be loved by everyone who just clapped. They'll rejoice with you. They'll embrace you as family. They'll pray for you. They'll encourage you. They'll help you. They'll cry with you. They'll cheer with you. They'll wave your banner. 
That's what they'll do. And you just have to do this. Jesus, I choose to make you the sir of my life. I am no longer on the throne. You are on the throne of my life. Circumstances are not my leader anymore. You, Lord Jesus, are the sir in my life, and I choose to follow you. That's all you got. It's just anything like that. The Bible says that we look at the outside. So we might, all of us might think that, you know, you got to get up here and get on the altar and stuff and do that certain religious thing. But God doesn't. He sees your heart, the word says. And so you can say whatever you want. If it's from here and it's real and you just let him know that you don't want to be the king of your life anymore. You want him to be sir. He knows. You can be a bumbling fool and drool all over yourself while you're saying it. Don't make any difference. He knows. He knows. You can make that choice right now. If you don't know what to do, and it seems kind of weird, like I want to be a Christian, I want Jesus to save me, I want to go to heaven if I die today, tomorrow, the next day, whatever, but I don't really know how to do all that, I try to be clear with you that you could just tell them that you want that and it's good enough. But if you want to pray with somebody, you can do that. I'm going to ask, Tom, would you do that? Would you join him? If a, okay, Bruni, please. Join a man, a man and a woman up here if you want to... To, to join them, they'll pray with you. If you want to say, Jesus, I, I want to be saved, they'll kind of help you along with that prayer. And, and if you have anything else that's going on in your world, you just want to pray with somebody or someone to pray with you, they'll, they'll be honored, privileged to do that as well. All right? So let's just do this. Let's bow our heads for just a second. We're about to get extremely vertical, okay? We're going to get real vertical in here. Let's bow our head. The Bible says that we are saved by the blood of the Lamb, what Jesus Christ did on the cross, and also by the word of our testimony, the people. People need to see the Holy Spirit in action. They've heard about this God that's unseen, but we want to see some things, right? So do me a favor here tonight with your heads down. If, if you sense that, that literally that God himself spoke to you tonight in this message. Just go ahead and lift your hand up. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. Okay, don't be ashamed. Keep your hand up. Now everyone, open up your eyes and look. Evidence of the living God. Awesome. Okay, so listen. God did something here tonight. I knew he was going to do something. I knew he was going to speak to his people and move upon you. He did his part. Now it's your part. He spoke loud and clear. You can, you, I saw the hands go up. He spoke loud and clear. Now it's your chance to sing loud and clear. So let's get up out of our seats. Let's get up out of our seats. And let's sing to the Lord. Let's, listen, don't leave the room. Don't leave the room. Stay right here and sing. You can go. If you need to go, you go. I'm just saying, don't just escape out here to try to get a coffee. If it's legit, you go. But if, if it's not legit, sing. Sing to the Lord. You guys ready to sing to the Lord? Yes. All right, let's do that right now. Come right to him right now and sing to him. Sing to him.